Okay, our last example. So cotangent squared theta is equal to negative 3 halves cosecant theta. It says use your trig identity. So uh, first of all, just recall our Pythagorean identities here. We want to work with this cotangent squared. Well, cotangent squared is not by itself. This is the one we're going to use, but we want to get cotangent squared by itself. So if I subtract one from both sides, I can see that this is the form I'm going to use of this particular identity. Um, so let's replace our cotangent squared with cosecant squared theta minus 1. We're going to leave our right-hand side of the equation the same. Let's just carry it down. Okay, now let's move everything to the left side to get this thing equal to zero so we can factor. So cosecant squared theta. If I have a negative 3 halves, move it to the other side, what's it become? Positive 3 halves cosecant theta. And then I still have this minus 1. And now that's equal to zero. Okay, so just like we did in the last lesson, this is hard to do with trig functions sometimes. It's a little bit easier to see it as x squared plus 3 halves x minus 1 equals to 0. And to factor that, if this tactic helps you, then use it. We're looking for what multiplies to give us the outside. So what multiplies to give us a negative 1. But when I add those together, I'm going to get positive 3 halves. So what about a... 2 and a negative half. When you multiply these two together, what do you get? A negative 1, right? When you add these two, you get a positive 1 and a half, or that's the same thing as 3 halves. So we found our factors. Now we always, we got to divide it by, when we split this term up, so you divide it by a 1x and a 1x. Okay, this does not reduce. So when you write from the bottom up, we just get x plus 2. All right? This doesn't simplify, so when we write from the bottoms up, we get x minus 1 half. Okay, so now what we want to do is use this information. Now, everywhere there's an x, we're going to put cosecant um, theta there. So let's rewrite this, and so now we're going to use our factors over there to rewrite it as cosecant theta plus 2. That's this first one. Now we're going to have cosecant theta minus a half. It's equal to 0. So now we set this one equal to 0 and solve, and then we set this factor equal to 0 and solve. So that's going to be our next step. Cosecant theta plus 2 equals 0. And then the other one is cosecant theta minus 1 half is equal to 0. And let's go over to our blue one, and we want to solve. So subtract 2 from both sides. So we want to know where the cosecant theta is equal to negative 2. Or what's equivalent to cosecant theta? Where the sine of theta, so what's the reciprocal of negative 2? negative 1 over 2. Okay, so where is the sine theta equal to a negative 1 over 2? Uh, let's see, it is a, it's going to be at 7 pi 6 right here, negative 1 over 2, and also 11 pi 6. So this one is just going to be um, 7 pi 6 and 11 pi 6. All right, let's come back over here. Um, move that out the way. Add 1 half to both sides. And this should definitely be a 0. Um, and that would give us cosecant theta is equal to 1 half, which we can also equivalent to that, sine of theta is equal to what? 2. Now, on the unit circle, where is the sine value equal to 2? They don't have one, right? So this one, this portion gives us no solution. 
Good. So we only use the solution values from this side, which our answers are just going to be 7 pi 6 and 11 pi 6.